Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on speed, distance and time. Now just to give you a simple example, let's just say that I travelled um, 20 miles in 2 hours. Now if I travelled 20 miles in 2 hours, how far would I have travelled in each hour? Well if it was 20 miles in 2 hours then I must have done on average 10 miles in each hour. So that after one hour I would have gone 10 miles and then another hour I would have gone another 10 miles getting to 20 miles. And the way we write that is 10 miles per hour because we're going 10 miles each hour. And what we've effectively just done is use a speed distance time formula. So we got the speed was the distance of 20 divided by the time of two hours. So speed is equal to distance over time. And actually, believe it or not, if you look at the unit, it tells you the formula because it's miles per hour, distance miles, divided by time hours. It's particularly clear if I just write the unit kilometers per hour because that slash is almost like a fraction. So it's distance over time. So the unit for speed actually gives you this formula here that you need to remember. And another way we can write this is something known as a sort of speed distance time triangle, so SDT triangle. And the way it works is this. If we want to work out speed, if I put a line here, we can see it's distance over time. I say over because the D is above the T. But I could have similarly put the line here. So now I could work out time because I can say that time is distance over speed distance divided by speed. And finally, if I wrote it like this, SDT, and put the line here, it enables me to work out the distance. The distance is the speed times the time. And I've got a little time set because the S and the T are on the same level. They're not over each other, so we don't divide them the same level, so we times them together. And we can use this kind of handy triangle for other things, like density as well, the form of a density in terms of mass and volume. So this SDT triangle is all we're going to need for these various problems here. So let's do question one. I cycle at an average speed of 35 miles per hour for two hours. How far do I travel? So let's write the information we've got. We've got um, the speed here, so I'm going to use S for speed as it is in here. That is 35 miles per hour. Then I've got the time here, so T, which is two hours. Now these units are consistent with each other because it's per hour and you've got hours here. So it means when I get the distance, it's going to be in miles to be consistent with that unit. So how far do I travel? Well, I want to work out distance so I can use this triangle. So the distance is the speed times the time. So it's the speed of 35 times the time of 2. And that gives me 70. And you've got to put the unit, it's miles. What about 2? I walk 30 miles and it takes me five hours. What is my average speed? Well, this time I've got the distance, uh, which is 30 miles. I've got the time again, which is five hours. And this time I'm going to find the speed. So speed using this triangle is D over T. So it's distance 30 divided by time five and that is six and let's look at the unit we've got miles hours so it's miles per hour what about question three and then it starts to get hard after that i gallop at seven miles per hour across a distance of 47.6 miles so we've got a speed of seven miles per hour and we've got a distance of 47.6 miles how long does it take in hours and minutes? So that is going to be the hard part at the end, converting it into hours and minutes. But to get the time, we can just use this triangle here. So time is distance over speed. So time is distance over speed, 7, if I do that on a calculator. And that gives me 6.8 hours. Now, I want it in hours and minutes, so it's not going to be 6 hours and 80 minutes. That doesn't even make sense because it's not 80 minutes in an hour. The way you can convert this to hours and minutes, now, if you've got a scientific calculator like this one, there's actually a key on your calculator. And if you look at your sort of uh, black keys here, it's one across and then two down. And you can see there's almost like a degree symbol, then like a kind of quotation mark. Now, if you press it, it will actually say 6 hours and 48 minutes. So it's 6 hours and 48 minutes, which is very clever.
But if you didn't have that functionality on your button, you got 6.8, the way you can convert it to minutes is, uh, well, we've got six full hours here. We want to work out 0.8 of an hour in minutes. And the way we can do that is we just write 0.8 hours and then if we times that by 60, that converts it to minutes. So we do the 0.8, the 0.8 times 60, and that gives you 48 minutes as you want. So you just take the decimal part, the point whatever, put a zero on the front, so 0.8 times it by 60, and that gives you the time in minutes. Alternatively, you could just on the 6.8 times 60 to convert to minutes, but then you have to work out the full number of hours you've got in that, in addition to the number of minutes you have remaining. Question four, Bob is sailing from A to C via B. He sets off at 3 p.m. at average speed of 12 kilometers per hour until he reaches B, and we've got these distances here. If he needs to reach C at 3.40, what speed does he need to go at? Now let's use the information we've got so far and then see how we can run with it. So we've got the journey from A to B first. We know that the distance is five kilometers, and we know the speed is 12 kilometers an hour. Now from that we can work out the time. So if we look at our triangle here, time is equal to distance over speed. So we do distance five over speed 12. And if we do that, five twelfths. Um, and I could again use that key or just times it by 60 if I want. So I'm gonna press that special key again. It tells me that that's 25 minutes. So we know it takes 25 minutes to get to B. Now he starts at 3 p.m. so we know that it's 3.25 uh, when he gets to B. So he's got to get to C by 3.40. Now it's 3.25, he's got to get there at 3.40. It means he has 15 minutes left. So we've done 40 minus 25 equals 15 minutes remaining. And we know he's got to go nine kilometers. So from B to C, we know the time is 15 minutes. Now we want to put that back in hours. So 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. We also know that the distance is nine kilometers. The distance is nine kilometers. And by putting this in hours, it means when we use this kilometers here, we're gonna get a speed in kilometers per hour rather than kilometers per minute, which is not an ideal unit. So we just do the speed is equal to the distance over the time. So speed is equal to distance, nine, divided by time, a quarter, and that gives you 36 kilometers per hour. And that's the final result. Now finally, five, Sheila rides 20 kilometers at the speed of 40 kilometers per hour, followed by 30 kilometers at the speed of 45 kilometers per hour. What was her average speed across the whole journey? Now, we've got two different parts of the journey here with different speeds and different distances. And what I find really helpful to do is put everything into a table. So we've got rows for speed, distance, time. And then we've got the first leg of the journey where she's going the 20 kilometers at 40 kilometers per hour. Then we've got the second leg of the journey and then we've got overall because we're trying to find an average speed across the whole journey. Now, what's great about this table is it's a really good way to organize all the lots of bits of information in the question. So she rides 20 kilometers initially. So the distance here is 20 kilometers. And that's at 40 kilometers per hour. So let's put that here in the speed row, 40 kilometers per hour. And we'll work out the time in a second. Now in the second leg of the journey, we know she is going 30 kilometers at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour. And then we want to work out the stuff in this overall column. Now let's work out these times first. So we know that time is equal to distance over speed, distance over speed. So it's 20 over 40, which is half an hour. So we've got half an hour. And then the time here, we've got 30 divided by 45, distance divided by speed. So you 30 over 45, which is two thirds of an hour. So let's put that as a fraction rather than some kind of nasty recurring decimal. And now let's consider our overall information. Now you can add the distances because you know the total distance is just the distance on the first leg plus the distance from the second leg. So we know overall we've got a distance of 50 kilometers. Now we can also add the times because we know the overall time is the time from the first leg of the journey plus the time from the second leg of the journey. So if we just do half plus two thirds, 
that gives us seven sixths of an hour, one and a sixth hours. And now we want to find the speed. Now we know that speed from this formula here is distance over time, so we can use the overall distance of the overall time. By the way, speed's the only things you can't add. So you can add the distances to get the overall distance, you can add the times to get the overall time, but it doesn't make sense to add the speed from the two parts of the journey. So we're gonna have to use the overall distance overall time. So the speed is a distance over the time. So if we just do 50 divided by 76, and that gives me 300 over seven, and if I do that as a decimal, I've got uh, 42.9 kilometers per hour to one decimal place. Now, we said it was going to be somewhere between 40 and 45. If she's traveling some of the journey at 40 kilometers per hour and another part of the journey at 45 kilometers per hour, her average speed across the whole journey must have been somewhere between those two numbers. So it makes sense that we've got an answer like this.